I have here the Wahoo Element Roam and the Garmin Edge 830. Now these are two top-end cycling computers from their respective brands. A question that I get asked a lot is how do they compare? And I'm gonna show you in this head-to-head. -head. If you want a full review of the Garmin, you can find one on our channel. We have just released it and we will be releasing one for the Wahoo in due course. So let's get stuck into it and what do you get in each of the boxes? We'll start with the Wahoo. So in the box, you have the cycling computer, you have the out front mount, you have stem mount plus cable ties to attach it, some rubber rings as additional attachments, you have a micro USB cable, screen protector and out front mount bolt, and instruction booklets for the computer. What do you get in the Garmin box? The cycling computer. You get Garmin's out front mount, you get the stem mount and lots of rubber rings to attach it with. You get a strap to attach it to your handlebars in case it falls off, and you have your instruction booklets as well. The two distinctive differences of the computers in terms of what you get in the box are the out front mounts. Now you can see that the Wahoo and the Garmin both use different locking mechanisms, and the Wahoo out front mount has retained the aerodynamic shape from the bolt, so it sits flush at each side it's bigger than the Bolt and it's not as aerodynamic according to Wahoo, but they wanted to keep a sort of family design and uh, that's exactly what they've done. Whereas on the Garmin one, I would say that the Garmin out front mount is a bit more chunky. It's not as good looking as the Wahoo one, but it is more functional in that you can attach additional battery pack to the bottom and therefore charge your computer as you're riding. The other differences are in the stem mounts so with the Garmin you mount it on the stem using these little rubber rings and you get loads of those in the box whereas with Wahoo they've gone for a less replaceable option of using cable ties so you can't move it around as easily but you cable tie it to your stem it's potentially a bit more secure but it means it's not as easy to jump between bikes if you ride more than one bike that is so the Wahoo is bigger than Garmin uh, it has a 2.7 inch screen diameter, although it actually looks smaller because of the size of the bezel around the edge. Obviously, a hallmark of Wahoo is that they use their LEDs along the top and the bottom. Whereas the Garmin has a 2.6 inch display, so there's not much in it, but it has a smaller bezel and it has a smaller body as well. So it sits lower to the bike. It looks less chunky when it's on top of the bike. Now I'm gonna put them on the scales to see how they stack up against each other. So the Garmin Edge 830 weighs in at 81 grams and the Wahoo Element Roam weighs in at 95 grams. So quite a significant difference between the two. So to set up both cycling computers, you do have to use their companion apps. That's the Element app for the Wahoo and Garmin Connect for the Edge 830. One is superior to the other. So Wahoo's uh, companion app is a lot better than Garmin Connect, which I have struggled with in the past and still do struggle with. Uh, the best thing that Wahoo have managed to do is the whole setup process is done on that app. So it's, the functionality is exactly the same as if you just use your smartphone, which most people do now. So it's something everyone's quite attuned to. And you can update the computer in real time, which makes it a lot easier to do and a lot less time consuming. So you can just hold the computer and pair it using the app and once it's found it you can just swap around the data screens as easy as just a touch of a finger on a smartphone screen. Whereas on Garmin it's not quite as simple. You use Garmin Connect to start the setup process and you have to pair the two to input your size and your weight and all of your FTP measurements or your VO2 max if you have that and your zones and then once that's done you can then move on to setting up the computer on the screen by pressing through the data profile screen or by starting a activity and then holding down each square to change it to how you want it to look. And they're quite different in that and the Wahoo is a lot less time consuming and frustrating than the Garmin and I found in general um, I'm much quicker setting up the Roam than I was setting up the Edge 830. I always say with Garmin computers you probably want to take sort of half an hour to an hour of a ride um, to work out how you exactly want it to look and to work out exactly where you want each data field. Um, it's much easier to change that on the Wahoo, you just have to grab your smartphone out, connect it and then update it on the fly. It's a lot simpler.
So setup process, I'm scoring it one point to Wahoo over the Garmin for its simplicity and smart use of the smartphone. Moving on to the hardware differences between the two computers, and there's quite a difference. I'll start with the Wahoo, which uses buttons, as Wahoo computers always have. So there's a button on the side here, that's the power button, also takes you to the main menu when you're actually using the device. There's an up button here and a down button on the right hand side, as well as three buttons along the bottom. Now, these buttons are not as good as the Garmin's touchscreen. I find that they're not responsive when you press them and you really have to press them in a certain place to get them to do anything. If you press the ones at the base too close to the base, then it doesn't actuate any type of change. You have to make sure you press in there each time. There's not much of a sort of responsive click when you do press them, especially if you're wearing gloves. It can be unclear if you have actually managed to press the buttons. And it's the same story on the side as well. Each of the buttons is quite difficult to depress, to make it move, and there's not enough feedback when you do it. Contrast that to the Garmin, which only uses two buttons. So there are two buttons on the bottom. There's a start button and there's a lap button. And there's also the power button on the side, of course. Everything else is done on the touchscreen, which Garmin have far improved for this Edge 830 model. And actually, this is the first time I've enjoyed using a touchscreen model to set up a cycling computer more than I have buttons. And the Garmin is going to edge out Wahoo in this hardware bit because of it. It's very responsive, it's very quick to use, and it makes swapping between data screens a lot quicker and a lot more assured, which is important when you're riding a bike through traffic than having to press those buttons. And if you're not quite sure that they've clicked or not, that can be quite distracting. Moving on to the screens of the two devices, the Garmin has more options for your data field setup, so it can show you your fields in either big boxes or smaller ones, and you can cram loads onto a screen, which personally is how I prefer it. Wahoo takes a slightly different tactic. Um, you can change pages using the bumper button down here, and that can show you your map or your elevation. But Wahoo also uses something called Super Zoom, which is where these buttons on the side of the computer comes into it. Um, and you can zoom in and out of your screen. It's useful to zoom in lots if you're training and doing efforts and you might just have power and heart rate and time. Or it's useful if you're on a really long ride and you want to have lots of data on there so you can see things like your bearing, so if you're going north, south, east or west, how long you've got to go until you get home or anything like that. You can shove that all onto one screen using the super zoom feature. In terms of screen quality, the Garmin has a crisper screen than the Wahoo. It's more defined and it's easier to see the data fields. But Wahoo has now integrated color into the Roam. So if you're looking at the map, it will show you it in different colors. If you're near water, that will come up blue. If you are following a route, the chevrons will be black. But if you're off route and going back to it, they'll be blue. So it uses color in different ways to show you different things, which is quite neat. Both computers have an ambient light sensor in the top left-hand corners of their bodies, but the Garmin is a bit more sophisticated and a bit more like your mobile phone where you can change it by swiping down from the top, you can alter how bright the screen is. Whereas on the Wahoo, it only changes when it gets lighter or darker. So if you cover it with your finger, the screen gets brighter or it puts a backlight on. If you remove that, it gets uh, less light, that light goes away. So the winner in terms of hardware, It'd have to be the Garmin by a hair. It has a really nice touchscreen to use, which makes it much easier to get through all your data screens and the Wahoo's buttons, which are a bit clunky. And it has a more defined and crisper screen. For both cycling computers, performance makes up a big part of their integrated software. And Garmin takes us to the extreme with the Edge 830, using its training load software, which can show you how well recovered you are, your VO2 max, your FTP, how much recovery you need to take. Uh, it can also do your training plans for you should you want it to. That can basically be everything you need in coach form as well as a cycling computer. Now Wahoo does do this to some extent. It has integrated training plans and structured plans from Team Ineos, for example, so ones that their riders might use. 
You can conduct certain tests on it, such as your FTP, and you can also use it to control your Wahoo Kicker Trainer should you have one. But I would say that the Garmin is more focused on your performance than perhaps the Wahoo is, whereas the Wahoo has a greater focus on navigation and the quality of the ride. The big difference between the two computers is how you see your ride afterwards. Uh, on the Wahoo, that's done in the companion app. You sync it to it and then you look at it in your history section where it can show you your details. It'll also show you all of your numbers and that's quite detailed. There is no browser website for Wahoo. It's all done via the mobile phone. Whereas on Garmin, you use Garmin Connect, which is both a smartphone app, but also a browser website. Both computers integrate fluently with Strava, Komoot, and a whole heap of other training software as well. So you can look at your rides on a third party and they both work in exactly the same way that when you pair it to your smartphone, it pushes it straight through to the third party app. So both computers use Bluetooth protocol to pair to your phone or to your trainers or your power meters if you want, but both also use ANT Plus, which is a big change for Wahoo that previously didn't because it obviously is a protocol that is owned and made by Garmin. But the significance of this is that you can now pair your Wahoo Element Roam to your Garmin Varia rear view radars if you want and lights, which is going to be a big deal for people that straddle both ecosystems and no longer means that you need to abandon one altogether. So it's kind of difficult to call a winner between the two in the integrated software department because it sort of depends on what you want to get out of your computer. If you're a real performance pusher, then you're probably going to prefer the Garmin, whereas if you're more about just enjoying the ride and having integrated software, which is easy to manage for your smartphone, then it's going to be the Wahoo. So I'm going to cop out and call it a draw. I'm going to move on to navigation now, which for me is one of the most important aspects of owning a cycling computer. And it's a big deal for Wahoo because the Roam, as the name suggests, has a much more sophisticated mapping and navigational capability. Uh, for the first time, they've integrated routing onto the device, so you can now search for a location on there and find it. You can also use your smartphone to do that as well. Um, it will also give you turn-by-turn -turn notifications depending on which software you use to upload the route. I still can't get it to work with Strava, so there's still some incompatibility between the Wahoo software and Strava's software but using Ride with GPS or other such third-party softwares, you can get the Wahoo to give turn-by-turn -turn notifications. It does this with its new color screen, um, and it can also route you back to your course should you get lost, which it does with nice different colored chevrons, so it's very clean and easy to see. You can also loop back to the beginning of your course should you want to cut it off early, and you can retrace to the start as well. And it'll also navigate you to the beginning of your route should you start from further away than where it is. It's useful, but it's potentially not quite as finessed as it should be. I've tried to calculate a route on the device and it wouldn't let me do it. Um, and it doesn't give turn by turn with Strava yet, which is also quite frustrating because a lot of people use that to create routes. Garmin has always done turn by turn navigation from Strava, which is really useful for a lot of riders that use that to create their routes. It can also do navigation from other third party apps such as Komoot. However, it's not as easy to integrate it onto the cycling computer as it is with Wahoo. That was a much smoother process. Getting maps onto each of them is similar. It's all done through Garmin Connect for the Garmin or the Element app for the Roam. You can also do it via accessing the files folder on the Garmin should you plug it into your desktop. However, it is easier to do it on the Wahoo because any time that a companion app is involved, the Wahoo is a smoother process. So again, it's a tough one to call. Uh, the Wahoo sort of nails the early part of the navigational process with its integration with third-party apps, but falls a bit short when it comes to actual navigation on the screen and its turn-by-turn -turn updates, whereas the Garmin absolutely nails that. And it's worth mentioning as well, the actual updates themselves are really easy to read and very clear on the Garmin. So I am going to hand it to the Garmin for nailing the most important part of any navigational tool, which is the navigating itself.
the final section, I'm gonna move on to GPS and battery life, starting with GPS. Both have multiple different levels, including Galileo, GLONASS, and various other uh, strengths and different satellites for GPS navigation. It's easier to choose on the Garmin which GPS satellite you want to use and therefore um, finesse it to your riding style. Uh, so if you're going in the middle of nowhere and you want really good navigation, then you'd set it to something like GLONASS or Galileo. Whereas if you're just going for a long, easy ride and you want to preserve battery life, you'd probably just set it for standard GPS. Now the Wahoo can do all of that, except I can't work out how to choose which satellite I use. So whether it's an automated process or not, I don't know. But in the smartphone app and on the device, I haven't found out how you choose that. So. The Garmin has a bit more hands-on sort of usability there. In the battery life, it's a tough one to call. The Garmin claims to have 20 hours of battery life, where the Wahoo claims to have 17 hours. Um, but in our actual use cases, we found them to be very similar. I did a 140 kilometer ride with the Wahoo and used about 40% of its battery life over the period of six hours. And that was with a power meter connected and a heart rate connected and running a route from Strava. With the Garmin Edge 830, it was used on a video shoot in the South Downs, which was, went on for a full day, and I was using a heart rate and also a map from Komoot, and that used about 50% of the battery. So, again, if I had to choose between the two, the Garmin would just edge it, especially for its additional functionality, like controlling the brightness of the screen, chucking an extra battery pack on there, um, you can send it to sleep really easily when you start running low on battery. It's just would be my chosen weapon if I was going in for a really long ride. So to sum up these two high-end cycling computers, I would say that if you're the sort of fit and forget type of cyclist that just wants a device that works, is easy to maintain and very easy to set up all via a smartphone, then the Wahoo Element Roam is the one for you. Whereas if you're the type of cyclist that is trying to squeeze every last inch out of their performance and wants a device that is going to help them do it, then the Edge 830 is the option for you. It's also worth bearing in mind that the Edge 830 is about 50 pounds more expensive than the Wahoo Element Roam. Now, if you have found this video to be useful, or indeed, if you have any other questions you'd like to ask, then please do pop them in the comments section below. And if you've liked it, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. But until then, we'll see you next time.